Happy chilly morning. Happy chilly Monday morning. Today we're going to talk about warming folks' hearts and warming folks' bellies. We're going to talk recipes. We're going to talk uh, bringing coats to homeless veterans. We're going to talk about things that warm our heart. But first of all, I have to welcome Miss Kathy Shin, who is here again today. Thanks, She's Sharon. always doing something for somebody. I and tried. right now you are gathering coats and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Okay. So right now, y'all just make plans. When we have a commercial break, I want you to run to your closets and I want you to find at least a coat out of each closet that you don't need anymore from men's, women's, and children's because believe it or not, in Cherokee County, Georgia, the largest population of homeless vets, there are also veterans living on the street with their children. So think about this. And we are collecting coats and we're gonna have, we're gonna talk about where we're gonna be collecting them. But first, let's take care of some business. Prayers come first. We have to ask y'all to keep praying for a precious, precious family whose dad, husband, papa was involved in a bad wreck out on 515 late Thursday evening and precious, precious Wilburn is still in um, the hospital in Marietta. He is doing better, but it's a long, long road ahead. And every day, right before we came on, I tried to update and look at what they were doing and what's going on. They took the vent out for just a little bit. He's 75 years old. He was hit hard. It was a tough, tough accident. And we all know that accidents happen and we just have to pray him through this. So pray for Gail, the family, the kids, the grandkids, everybody that Papa gets to come home and he is going to be fine and dandy. And again, prayers will be answered. Now I will tell you something we have all prayed for, safety in numbers on these roads. The leaves are falling and the mountains are calling. Do you know what that means? Traffic. Traffic. <laughs> traffic. Lots of traffic. Lots of people coming to see the beautiful fall leaves. Now, I can tell you, Julie, who owns Julie's Restaurant up in Murphy, North Carolina, won the award this weekend for the best pictures of fall color. And she has enticed me to a point that I'm ready to drive up there and take my own pictures because she had some amazing photos. If you have great photos, I wish you would share them with me that we can share them on the air because I get out and take photos all the time of different places, different things, and we're going to show you some of those. But all I got was deer in people's yard eating their grass <laughs> up. I mean, I didn't get any good leaves, but Julie did, and so we're going to share those with y'all. Share your photos with me. Last week we shared photos of Dawn in the muscadine vines, and oh my goodness, talk about muscadine central, gallons and gallons and gallons of wild muscadines, and those are the kind that make the most amazing jelly, and I hear tell, you know I don't drink, but I mm -hmm. hear tell that they make awful good wine mm -hmm. too. And I just will say some of the churches have ordered some of that wine to use in communion, so it must be pretty good. But, but anyway, um, share your photos with me on Facebook and then I can capture them and use them on the air because I would love to share your photos. I'm sure that y'all have some views out your kitchen window that will just marvel people. They'll just say, oh, we need to run to the mountains to see those. No, <laughs> no, apple picking. Y'all have been picking apples, and y'all have been buying apples, and y'all have been buying that apple butter, and I'm sure all, all of the growers appreciate that. And then there was the Apple Festival, and we are so thankful the weather was amazing. This is what brings people. This morning you got dressed and you brought comfort stuff because mm -hmm. it's cold. It's cold in these mountains. But that's day. what you want when you come to the mountains in the fall. Mm -hmm. You want those crisp, chilly mornings. Sweater weather. Sweater weather. And then in the <clears throat> afternoon, you're like, I should have put on my shorts because I'm burning <laughs> up. So it's very weird. You know, we have four seasons in Georgia every single day. So <laughs> so we're going to share some photos with y'all today. And we're going to share a little bit of video. And we're going to just share some stuff. So Trace, have we got that stuff ready? We're working on it. Okay. Um, Kathy, let's talk a little bit about the homeless vets and how you got involved in this. Um, I was attending a Halloween party, as it turns out, <clears throat> last year, 
at the Cherokee Association of Realtors, and there was a representative that uh, heads up the homeless veterans program mm -hmm. in Cherokee County. Mm -hmm. Is it Jim? Yes. Yes. You know Jim. Yes, I know Everybody Jim. Everybody knows well. Jim. Yes. Okay. Yes. And Jim and I connected afterwards because I had just joined Acopia Home Loans, and every year they do a code drive. Mm -hmm. And Sonia said to me, okay, pick a charity. And after having met Jim and learning some of the statistics here mm -hmm. in Cherokee County, because I've been a resident in Cherokee County since I relocated here. Mm -hmm. That was 22 years ago. Right. Um, I just decided that that was the organization that really needed um, our help. I, anytime I can help support anyone that serves in mm -hmm. the military. Absolutely. Um, my dad served, my uncle served, my grandfathers, my great uncles. Um, we just have a family tradition of that. Yep. And I feel like since I didn't serve, I can at least serve them. And we're approaching Veterans Day. Yes, we are. We're approaching Veterans Day. And, and you know, as we whine and bellyache about, oh, it's cold, I gotta turn the heat on. Oh, it's cold, I gotta make sure the furnace is working. Oh, it's cold, oh, it's cold. We have, we have cover on our beds, we have coats in our closets, we have heat in our homes. Cherokee County boasts the largest population of homeless vets, which mm -hmm. is pretty sad. Mm -hmm. And with those homeless vets come homeless children. Yes. And so we're not asking you just to get coats for you, for men and women. We're saying get them for the children too. So mm -hmm. if you have coats, we want to be, we want this to be the biggest year ever. And I that think would be fabulous. I think the ETC family can make it happen because ETC is known for giving. And let me tell y'all something that happened last week. <clears throat> I've got a lot going on with several things. And I'm very, very excited about some of them. And I'm really looking forward to an amazing 2024. It is going to be blockbuster amazing. It is going to be awesome. But right now, as a mom of a child who died, I hate winter. I just hate winter because I know that I'm going to be depressed. I'm going to be sad. I'm going to be dealing with a lot of crap. But y'all lift my spirits. And last Monday, I walked into a restaurant and people told me that they watch and that they've learned so much about the community through me. And then I walk into the grocery store and somebody says, oh, I love the recipes that you're sharing. Thank you for doing that. And then I walk here and there and people keep saying, you make a difference in our lives. Y'all have no idea how much difference you make in my life. And so on Friday the 13th, my phone rang. Okay, I was born on Friday the 13th, so how, <laughs> how lucky is that? And, and, I, and everybody all day long kept saying, oh, it's Friday the 13th, oh, it's Friday the 13th. Well, my phone rings, it's Friday the 13th, and I get this call from this precious lady who watches the show. And she reminded me of a song that Martha Gibson and Linda Autry did for me to have at my husband's funeral 22 years ago. And she said, do you think there's any way you can put your hands on that? I want my husband to hear it and I want my daughter to be able to learn to sing it for her dad. And I'm thinking, I have 2,000 to 10,000 DVDs and videos. I don't have a clue, but I said, Madeline, I will do the best I can, and I will see if I can find it. Within five minutes, and if you think God doesn't step in, I didn't do this. I couldn't have found it in 100 years. I walked in, and I opened a drawer somewhere that I would never have thought about having this. And I opened the drawer, and five DVDs down, either three or five, it's there. Not only did I find one copy, I found two copies. <laughs> and I'm like... Are you serious? So, so as I've spent the weekend preparing myself for winter, because mentally I have to prepare myself. I'm lightening up my bathroom. I'm taking down dark colors. I'm giving me light colors. I'm just trying to brighten where I will be dealing with the crisis of my daughter was born Christmas Eve. She died in, in January. It was a hard, hard time. So I know that winter is going to take me down. The way I fight being taken down is to stay busy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how we all fight being taken down is to stay busy, to cook for friends. And so I kind of made this deal yesterday with all of y'all. 
I said today, as we face winter, because each one of you, everybody watching me today, will have a winter coming that they will face the loss of a loved one. Mm -hmm. Because we're all gonna lose somebody, we're all gonna fight either cancer or um, Parkinson's or something. Alzheimer's. We're all gonna fight something, Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's, oh my God. How cruel and how evil is Alzheimer's. We're all gonna face that winter I have faced this winter for 10 years now. Mm -hmm. This starts my 11th year to have to deal with my daughter's death, but the way you do that is you pick up the phone, you call a friend that you haven't talked to for a while, or you even message them on Facebook and say, hey, I saw you on Facebook, and, and we used to have some great times at lunch, and da 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 and let's connect again. Every day, start a journal. Do one thing. One person, reach out, either cook something, or share a message with them, or share a funny with them. Do something to reach out to somebody else that you think, you know, and, and, and my friend Priscilla Peake, whose who's precious husband Mark lost a battle with cancer, I think about her every single day now because they were like that love story, mm -hmm. you know, how you have that perfect love story, and then it ended. Mm -hmm. It ended. And so her winters are like mine. They just stink. They just stink. And so in order to get through winter, I want each and every one of you to reach out and help somebody else. And, and like Wilbur and Gail are our huge community in LJ. Everybody knows him. Everybody knows he drives a dump truck. Everybody knows he's a great pawpaw. Everybody knows he loves 57 Fords. Everybody loves them. Reach out to them. But after the crisis is over, don't forget them because there will be days that she will remember getting that phone call that he had had a horrific accident. I watched a helicopter, two helicopters, take off in Canton yesterday. And I remembered the day that my dear friend David Savage died in a helicopter on his way to Erlanger. He was 39 years old. He had a massive heart attack. Everybody is facing a winter that will bring on some sadness. Your mom died in a horrific car accident. Yes, she did. Everybody yeah. has that winter blah that will just it's it's bad it's mm -hmm. just bad it's even worse when it happens on a holiday it is of course of Mom's course accident it is. was on Easter Sunday yeah yeah of course it is so now I want y'all all to go to the dollar store buy your little journal book and and maybe write a prayer message on there to yourself every day but at the same time connect with one person and put that person's name down and then in February I want you to sit back and read all of those things and say, this got me through the winter. Mm -hmm. Calling so-and-so that I hadn't talked to for a while got me through the winter. Having lunch with this person I haven't seen in years got me through the winter. I, I ran into Phyllis Gerard at the doctor's office the other day with the cancer doctor. Her brother's got cancer. I was dealing with all this craziness, thinking I'm gonna lose my arm, and I'm just like, oh my God, what's next? But it was so good to see Phyllis, you know, yeah. just to see her again. She worked for me for years, and oh my gosh, I saw her children grow up. Now she's got grandkids that are grown up. I'm like, we just, we need to connect. We need to connect with other people that might be hurting too, because I'm not the only mom who's facing winter without a child. I'm not the only mom who buried a husband and a mother within six weeks. You know, I was like, Roper Funeral Home ought to call me the queen of funerals, because I could just walk in and nail it. I knew exactly what I wanted and how I wanted it done because I'd done it before. That's not something that's fun, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not something that's fun, but we have to reach out to everybody. So today in our community, I want you to challenge yourself to just reach out to one person every day, every day. If it's a phone call, if it's a text, I like handwritten cards. I love to write Me cards too. to people. That's my thing. I just like doing that. And so do that. But while you're thinking about all the stuff you're going through, <clears throat> I want you to go through your closets and I want you to get us some coats. Yes. Now we're gonna have bins at Hartman Law. Yes. All locations. Yes. And who's the other attorney? <clears throat> Luter, Larkin, and Hunter. They have uh, 10 offices throughout the um, metropolitan area. Okay. Um, <coughs> I, I'm just so grateful that <clears throat> 
referral partners have stepped up and said, oh, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. put a donation box here. Um, We're going to have one at Talking Rock, Rock Realty, Realty in downtown Ball Ground. Uh, Harry Norman and Blue Ridge has agreed to have a box as well. Mm -hmm. And um, and Gwen MacArthur here at ETC is sending out, she's going to get word, and I think she will be the biggest collector of all because everybody loves her and everybody knows her. And she will ask, and I think they will answer. So I, I hope that ETC really comes on board and helps with this because that would be fabulous. We have a huge family of people in all the counties that we serve, and we can all make a difference. Mm -hmm. Just a jacket, just a coat, just a. If every one of us brings one, wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. Wouldn't that be awesome? So yeah, so we want to do that. We want to reach out to these homeless vets, and we want to help them. Now, have we got some pictures we can share? Okay, now this, I was on my way to see Santa and Mrs. Claus yesterday, and how appropriate that deer were in the yard. <coughs> deer were in the yard of their neighbor, and I said, maybe they were waiting on Rudolph to load up the sleigh and get ready for the parade <laughs> that's going to be hitting, it's going to be hitting ball ground. The 50th parade will be on December the 1st, and we want y'all to come out and be there. But look at those deer, is that not precious, in the yard near Santa's house. So that's... <coughs> That's I pretty awesome. Didn't know Santa lived in Ballground. Santa lives in Ballground. <laughs> he does. Now these are Julie's mm. photos, and they oh, are wow. award-winning. This is fall in Murphy, North Carolina. So if you haven't Beautiful. been to Murphy lately, I suggest you make a trip to Murphy, and you take your camera or your good iPhone, and you take some pictures. Is that not gorgeous? Does that just depict fall? That's perfect. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, it's just so beautiful. And um, I loved working in Murphy. You know, I was there for four years and met the nicest, nicest people. And uh, what, what a beautiful place to take a walk today. Mm -hmm. That's just, it's, it's so incredible. And I haven't seen anything like that in ball ground yet. Our leaves aren't quite doing what they should. Now that the cool temperatures are hitting, maybe they will. But look at that. Beautiful. Mm. And the water was just crystal clear. And I bet you it was cold. Oh, yeah. I bet you. No, it was no doubt. Cold. Yeah, no <laughs> I doubt. Bet it was super cold. And I actually, I think uh, somebody had posted that there were snow flurries in North Carolina yesterday. Okay, now this, y'all gotta, y'all gotta say this and remember this. Strong. No, my friend, I am far from it. What you're seeing is simply a weak person with a very strong God. Put that in your head and just say it every single day. We're not strong. We don't have the strength. We can't make it, but with him we can. So strong, no, my friend, I am far from it. What you're seeing is simply a weak person with a very strong God. If there weren't a very strong God, I'd probably be in jail. So. <laughs> Okay. okay. <clears throat> this weekend, Thanks for sharing, Sherry. <laughs> this weekend, I spent so much time getting out things that I love. These pillowcases have been in my possession for over 40 years. They were always on my guest room bed, and now they're on my own bed. Because I said, if I died tomorrow, I would say on my way to Jesus, I never used the pillowcases that I loved, and so I'm using <clears throat> them now. Get the stuff out that reminds you of the people who made a difference in your life and share those moments with yourself. Remember them, remember what they taught you. And, and this weekend, this was an event that happened in Ball Ground and this is so funny because as you see all these firefighters out here and the police officers, within about 15 minutes of me taking this video, these responders had to go down the street to Old Dawsonville Road where they responded to a fire. The fire was engulfing a garage barn that took down a pontoon, a 1974 Ford truck that had low mileage on it that belonged to an elderly gentleman and his RV. So, and the bad thing about this fire was it was about 150 feet from a hundred townhomes. Wow. And the wind was blowing pretty strong and I thank the good Lord that the Cherokee County responders were amazingly fast. They got that fire out very quickly and thank goodness the night before we had had some rain and with that rain everything was a little damp Damn. so it didn't burn as fast. If we had not had the rain on Friday and Friday evening, we probably would have had a big problem because everything was so dry for so many weeks. 
and then we got that little rain. Mm -hmm. So that little bit of rain, see, God steps in just when you need him to. But this oh, fire, there's fire, it went very, very fast. The barn was gone, and um, it was, you know, the townhomes, people from the townhomes were standing out there watching and waiting and wondering as the wind was blowing because the wind was blowing and um, it was again about 150 feet from the townhomes. See how close the townhomes are? Yeah, I would have been standing out there praying. Yes. That it <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. But again, uh, Cherokee County has the best responders. If you are looking for a future, if you are looking for a great job, Cherokee County Sheriff's Department is hiring. Cherokee, Cherokee County firefighters are always looking for recruits. This is a great way to make a living. And um, I know that they're on 24 on, 24 off, so mm -hmm. they get some family time. Of course, they're away from their family four times. But, but it is just a great way to, number one, to show that you have a giving heart. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, you have to have a giving heart to, to be a firefighter, to be a police officer. So to each of them, thank you very much for showing up and it literally they were across the creek doing the event now this is the recipe that's going to be in the progress this week and when it gets cold i have to cook hot stuff i have to cook warm stuff i have to have stuff warm i have to have coffee or hot tea but shrimp and grits i make shrimp and grits like nobody else mine are not even like anybody's ever heard tell of them because i dream this stuff up I put what I like in them. What I like is cream cheese, and what I like is cheese, and what I like is shrimp. And so it doesn't have any of the ingredients any of those professionals do. It's got the sherry recipe, and the sherry recipe is just <coughs> cheesy with lots of cheese, lots of cream cheese, lots of butter, salt and pepper, and then a whole bunch of shrimp. So, so And, and you follow that up with an appointment with the cardiologist? Yes, yes the cardiologist. <laughs> Actually, I have an appointment with the cardiologist this 26, so that's funny. But I only ate one small serving of them, but man, they are good. They are good, and they even warm up well. So, yeah, yeah and it's easy to do. And there's another dish that you can take to your friends and take to your neighbors. Mm -hmm. Because you can make them a dish full, and they can eat on it all weekend long. And as the, as the cold weather approaches, there will be somebody. A lot of people who live alone don't like to cook, so they eat stupid stuff like just a cheese sandwich my grandmother was famous for i'll just fix me a bologna sandwich we can't live on bologna alone granny but she tried to but single people who live alone older people who live alone often don't get the nutrition they need that has got potassium calcium calories <laughs> Yeah, and it's got protein with the shrimp. So mm -hmm. it's got a lot of food groups in it. But honestly, I don't make them like anybody else. All those people that do all that fancy stuff, oh no. You just make you a big old pot of grits, add your butter, add your cream cheese, add your Velveeta cheese, stir that thing down, then add you a can of Rotel tomatoes, salt and pepper, and eat on it all weekend long. Yeah. So, and <clears throat> being, it's good. Being single, I, I find that, I, and I do love to cook, mm -hmm. um, but I'll cook and then I portion everything out and put it in my freezer. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I you have <clears throat> stuff. Yeah, yeah, I don't cook every day, but at least I'm not eating junk, junk. food. Yeah, which yeah, is good. Yeah, yeah. Well, we hope we hope that each and every one of you um, will think about the winter. If if you have a loving family around you, if you've never lost a child, if you've never lost a, your spouse. I have so many friends who lost their spouse, and, and each one of them had a very special love story. Mm -hmm. And now some, the widow, some the widower, they are facing winter alone. And it is tough. It is mm -hmm. tough. I, I just, I wish I could wake up and it'd be February the 5th. After February the 5th, I start being human again. But it's really tough. Should it's, I mark that on my calendar? Yeah, I'm marking <laughs> on my calendar. I'll be back. I'll be back. But um, last week... I was thinking, I was planning, and I was studying, and I was thinking, okay, when am I going to retire? Well, I'm not. I don't want to retire because I think if I didn't stay as busy as I do, I wouldn't exist. I would not exist. And so I keep myself busy, whether it be volunteering or doing something crazy or heading out on a weird trip or just dreaming up stuff to stay busy. And I think that's important. So I think we all need to. And I had to laugh when I was showing those um, beautiful pillowcases. My Aunt Bessie could crochet. My Granny could crochet. My Aunt Leela could crochet. My Aunt Timmy could crochet. Everybody could crochet. Well, they tried to teach me to crochet. That little tiny detail stuff, I can't do it. 
Afghans, I can make an Afghan. I can make you an Afghan if you want one in my spare time. But, <laughs> yeah, but but mm. I could not do that little detail work. And, and I, they tried to teach me to quilt. And everything I quilted it had blood drops on it because I couldn't wear a thimble. And I kept pricking my finger and I kept getting blood. And my granny said, give me that. Now, you don't leave that thing alone. You're ruining our quilt. And I'm like, okay. But look back at the things in your home that represent people who made a difference in your mm -hmm. life. And it will truly make you smile. And it'll get you through a rough day. And um, every morning now, I use this old coffee pot that grounds in your coffee. When you pour the cup out, I've got that many grounds in the bottom of my cup. And I'm like, I can't believe I do this when I've got those instant coffee things I can use. I like the coffee grounds. They remind me of my grandmother. So mm -hmm. I do it. I just suck it up and do it. But we all have such precious memories right in here. And we just have to go look for them. And then it will help you get through a bad day. So today, we're going to help a very special lady get through a bad day. We're going to play a song that I hope will touch your heart, warm your heart, probably make you cry, but it is called Far Away. Martha Gibson had done it for me at my mother's funeral, my husband's funeral, and my daughter's funeral. And when uh, I listen to it, I now feel happiness because none of them are suffering anymore. Um, none of them are fighting this earthly battle. And speaking of earthly battles, um, for 10 days, we thought life was good. And then eight days ago, nine days ago, things broke out in Israel. Mm -hmm. and the world changed. And I think it changed the way we all look at life now. I was looking, there are, is a group of seals going in to Israel to go to Gaza who may hopefully make a difference. There are 199 hostages now. We know mm -hmm. that many have not made it. We know the violence that's going on in the world and we know that there have been children beheaded. We know that there have been mothers killed in front of their children. We know that um, there's been a lot of torture. And mm -hmm. so when we think of death, we don't think about torture. But in the last nine days, we have seen an evil in the world that knows how to inflict torture and, and just I don't even know how to describe it. I watched a reporter this morning as they were sharing some of this stuff, and I thought, I can't, my granddaughter works in Anchorage in television and has for years, and if they told me that my granddaughter was gonna be sent to Israel right now, I believe I'd have a nervous breakdown. And I'm mm -hmm. just like, these reporters are sitting in New York City in a studio one day, and the next day they're on their way to Israel. Mm -hmm and often reporters don't make it. Mm -hmm. And we saw a reporter who was laying on the ground avoiding gunfire. And so say a prayer for all of them. Say a prayer that we're gonna get through and we're gonna, we're gonna be there for Israel and we're gonna help Israel because Israel is God's country. Mm -hmm. You know how we make fun of these mountains and we say they're God's country? No, Israel is God's country. Mm -hmm. So we just think we are, but we're going to go now to Martha Gibson and Linda Autry on piano. And this was recorded. Um, my dear friend Joyce Owens made it possible for me to have this. And uh, boy, have I played it a million times. It's probably scratched. Dwight Sanford would choke me if he could see the condition of this CD because <laughs> I've handled it so much and he keeps giving me speeches about handling them. No. Nah. It's scratched, but I want y'all to just sit back and listen to a very, very favorite song of mine.
Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? The mountains are calling and they're closer than you think. Farmers Crossing in Ballground offers creekside lots with homes beginning in the 400s. Walking distance to downtown shopping, dining, tennis courts, Calvin Farmer Park, and local events. It also includes a beautiful hike to Long Swamp Creek. Leave the car and the worries behind. Move in by fall 2023. Call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third-generation race car driver, and we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. The ETC Game of the Week is back again this football season. Watch your local teams go head-to-head -head each week only on ETC TV3. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories. Writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Okay, I have another message. This is from Bob Reese, and this is the bike and classic car ride. This is a ride for charity. It benefits White Christmas in Cherokee County, and you know, this is like so many years they have been doing this to, to provide Christmas for children. Okay, the sign up is nine o'clock, the ride is 10, lunch and concert is 11.15, and let me tell you about lunch. It features the slaw from the Georgian Hills restaurant. And can you attest to that slaw, It Ben? was pretty tasty. It yes. was pretty tasty. Mm -hmm. 
it's like yummy. So the Shriners always provide that slaw too. The, the Shriners always use that at every event they have. But this is at Hickory Flat Fellowship Church, 5301 Hickory Flat Highway, Canton, Georgia. And it's on Saturday, October 21st. So please be out there, be there to support. If you don't need anything except buy tickets to the raffle, whatever you can do to make a difference. <clears throat> and this, this is one of those things that it is, um, it is Cherokee County again. Cherokee County is a very big metropolis, growing, growing, growing. But the same people year after year after year give back, give back, give mm -hmm. back. And I think that's what's so cool, even though the area is growing tremendously, not only do the same people give back, new people are coming and new people are helping and everybody's getting together and making a difference in lives. And this is to make the difference in the life of a child. So again, Saturday, October 21st, and you can, it's a bike and classic car. It's a ride for charity and you can be part of that. It's $20 to sign up for a car or bike. Additional riders are $5 and lunch and concert is free when you sign up. So come and have lunch and enjoy the music. Glory Bound provides the music and it's gonna be just a fun, fun time. Now, we're gonna show a flyer now that kind of shows you the locations of where you can drop off coats because before today's over, I'm gonna convince you to get up out of your chair, get up out of your recliner, go to your closet mm -hmm. and get a coat or two or three or four. I can guarantee you, somebody's gonna be losing weight, somebody's gonna be gaining weight, somebody's gonna be doing something that you can get a coat out that doesn't fit anybody anymore. There's a coat in your closet. And if you've got kids, Lord have mercy, you feed them and they grow. <laughs> and then their coats don't fit them anymore. So please uh, gather your coats. We will have drop boxes at Harry Norman in the Blue Ridge facility, Hartman Law, all locations, um, our ball ground office of Talking Rock Realty, and tell me the name of it again. Luder, Larkin, and Hunter. Luder, Larkin, and Hunter. That Attor sounds like a cool closi name. Closing yeah. attorneys. Yeah, closing um, attorneys, okay. And they have um, offices all over the, the Metroplex. So. And, and there you go. We can make a difference in somebody's life. And, and when you think about Cherokee County being such a growing metropolis, big, big area, big spread area from Woodstock up to ball ground. And at that point in time, it was kind of country living, you know, and then all of a sudden it grew and it grew and it grew. And at the same time, um, we were fighting wars. We were bringing home guys who weren't prepared to deal with life when they came home. Mm -hmm. We were, you know, had you ever heard the term post-traumatic PTSD? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, people are dealing with that. When mm -hmm. I watch the news on what's happening in Israel, I feel like I get that because mm -hmm. then I get down and I get depressed and it's very, so imagine being in the war. Imagine coming home and feeling like you lost your best friend in battle. You lost your comrade. You were the only survivor. You know, that's tough. Mm -hmm. That is tough. And Cherokee County is filled with veterans. And uh, you know what's so sad about those? Many of those veterans excelled in the military, mm -hmm. excelled and came home and could not deal with the memories and the things that they brought in their mind. So That's true. Yeah, it's very, very hard. So if you want to be a part of that, all you have to do is go to your closet and get a coat. And if you'll even pick up the phone and call me, we'll figure out a way to get it to me. You know, Cher, I just had a thought too. If anyone has a business that would like a donation box, mm -hmm. I'd be happy to drop one off and right. help that. Way yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. We need to get the boxes out everywhere that we possibly can because um, according to this morning's temperatures, was it 42? Yeah, something crazy. Yeah, it was cold. <laughs> it was cold. According to the early morning temperatures, we are going, and according to the persimmons, we're going to have a cold winter because it's showing a spoon, not a fork, not a knife. So, so it's going to be cold and we want to help protect those who are out there hurting. Now, let me talk about something that happened in Ball Ground this weekend. Um, there was a, a, an amazing estate sale that is the home of a, a wonderful family. He was the postmaster in Ball Ground forever and ever and ever. I had so much fun going through their stuff. Just, <laughs> just I like stuff. Everybody who knows me knows I'm stuff obsessed. Well, I got me the finest set of white sheets you ever saw. <laughs> 
and I love them and I took them home and I washed them and I sunned them out in the sun, let them freshen up. I just, I just loved it. And I, I fixed the bed with all this white stuff and I was just all so excited. And I got in there last night and I put two quilts on and it wasn't enough because I had this idea I wasn't going to do that comforter anymore. I'm old, but I've been having hot flashes. <laughs> now at my age, there ain't no reason for a hot flash. But I've been having hot flashes, so I determined to myself I need cotton sheets and I need cotton quilts because it's that old nylon in that comforter that was on my bed. So I get the comforter off the bed. I have not had a hot flash since I got the comforter off the bed, but I froze to death. So, so, so I got a choice. I got to put something heavy back on there because these cool mornings, it's too... It's not hot, it's not cold enough to turn the heat on yet, so you just kind of, you know, let it cool off. But I got so tickled because I was so, I just felt so good, and then pretty white sheets, and then pretty quilts, and I was just all excited. And then my feet were cold, so I put an afghan over my feet. And then I think, well, it's that stupid comforter, because I was used to that nylon that I'm trying not to do. But I don't know why. I mean, I'm too old to be having hot flashes. Did you have hot flashes? I had them for a very short time. I was very lucky when I went through I menopause. I mean, I've been lately. It's crazy. Because it was only about six months. But two years ago, when I had to have a hysterectomy, I went through menopause for a second time. Mm -hmm. And That's I've had fine. hot flashes ever since. It's, mm -hmm. it's been horrible. But well, yeah. I blamed it on my comforter. So <laughs> I've, I've done the test now. I've done the white, pretty sheets, and I love them. And uh, I got tickled because I woke up this morning, my feet were cold, my hands were cold, and I'm like, this is not working, <laughs> so I don't know. I'll just have to figure it out. But I try to do stuff without prescriptions. I take mm -hmm. lots of vitamins. Mm -hmm. I'm a vitamin nut. And I take this vitamin, this vitamin, this vitamin, this vitamin. And when my hair was falling out from COVID and boy, did it fall out. I kept saying, I'll find something. Well, I took like six bottles of biotin and none of that happened. Everything I tried didn't work. And I said, okay, I give up. I think it's a cycle that happens after COVID because then my hair started coming back. It's still fine. It's not as coarse as it was. But we are right now approaching a time with winter coming. We're going to be inside more. We're going to be around more people. And yesterday, I was in Walmart, and, and I gotta say, Kent and Walmart, y'all pulled it off yesterday. You handled the masses, because it was packed. <laughs> it was packed, and I love this little greeter up there. He's, he's cool, and uh, we were talking. I said, you know, you can see anything in Walmart, can't you? He said, oh, you have no idea. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I do. I've seen about everything in here today. But out of all those masses of people in Walmart, two people were masked, only two people. Mm. So I feel good about this world, because I think that you know, I try to health up by eating better, taking vitamins, drinking juice, drinking natural water. I try to do stuff like that, you know, instead of pumping yourself full of stuff. And so I have a bag of masks. If anybody wants them, you can have them because I'm not wearing them. But I, I got tickled because when I left that Walmart, two people, two people out of the whole store had on masks. And I thought, well, maybe they were compromised because of a health issue or mm -hmm. something. And some people do wear them because of that. But after reading all the stats on it, how it brings the germs back into you, I'm thinking, I don't need that. The reason I started this deep cleaning and getting rid of stuff is because I have already seen, just with the fall stuff in the air, my breathing had already been affected. And I was getting stuffy, and I thought, I don't need this again. I don't need to be closed up for the winter with breathing problems like I had last year. So we kind of have to... We have to know what our body needs and mm -hmm. know what our body wants. And if it wants a lot of water, drink a lot of water. If it wants some juice, drink you some juice. But we kind of, we can do it without medicating. You know, we don't have to do all this medicine stuff. So I'm trying to go this little healthy route. And speaking of healthy route, Suzanne Summers um, battled breast cancer for 23 mm -hmm. years. But she did it truly as naturally as she possibly could. She made it 23 years. That's like a lot of time to make it through breast cancer. She passed away today, was her 77th birthday, and she passed away yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, it's so weird because she just followed, she followed her gut, you mm -hmm. know? And a lot of people, my Aunt Betty got breast cancer and um, walked in, had her first chemo treatment, and died two days later. Mm -hmm. So... We don't know what's good for us, but I think our bodies do. 
I think our bodies know what we respond to, and if you respond to walking more, if you respond to eating better, if you respond to drinking more water, does your body know when you're doing good? Mm -hmm. I, I drink about a half a gallon of water at least a day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you have to, yeah. yeah. And your sugar is really, your sugar is angry, isn't it? Mm, yeah. Yeah. And when your sugar gets angry, it gets angry over stupid stuff. For, sometimes for no reason. No reason. Stress. Yes. Stress will do it. That is so weird to me because when you showed me that one day we were just, you know, she's not overeating, she's not, and then all of a sudden it's like, whoa. Yeah. And it spikes. Mm -hmm. And that is so crazy. Yeah. No explanation for mm -mm, it. Mm -mm. And what brought on that problem? Was it your massive surgeries? Was no, it, it was no. it was before um, I had the surgeries, and all my whole entire life, I'd had normal blood work, and then all of a sudden, go in for my blood work, and they go, "Oh, by the way, you're a diabetic," <laughs> like, and you're like, "What?" How does that happen? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so yeah. It, it's been a bit of a struggle for the last three years mm -hmm. trying mm -hmm. to, to manage it. Yeah. So. But can you talk about your monitor that you use? Because mm -hmm. that's kind of, it was experimental. I have, our son died of diabetes and, and lost his eyesight and, lost, and then finally his heart quit. But, but he had to prick every day. Oh my God. I, when and I he first hated it. He became an angry young man yeah. because he hated that pricking. So um, when I was first diagnosed, um, that's what they gave me. Mm -hmm. And um, here's one thing that you may or may not know, but as you age, um, your skin actually thins out. Mm -hmm. um, I found that out when I had to have my fingerprints taken for my mortgage license. Mm -hmm. um, they kept having to try and take them because they said my fingerprints were, were vanishing. Well, like, that's good okay. if you're going to rob banks. Yeah. yeah older people can <laughs> rob banks now because their fingerprints are vanishing. Well, um, that's good. <laughs> but, but all of that pricking was causing pain. I mean, my fingers were so painful. And he became angry over it, yeah. really angry. So um, a friend, a, a new friend that I met um, suggested um, this meter. Um, so I wear a sensor in my arm mm -hmm. and it will, um, it scans and it will tell me instantaneously what my blood sugar is. That's crazy. So with this and some oral medication, I'm able to better control it. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, sometimes there's just no explanation. It can mm -hmm. be nine o'clock at night, I had dinner at six, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden it'll start spiking. Mm -hmm. So. And is this monitor, is it covered by insurance? Is it does, it something? My insurance company does cover it, mm -hmm. which I'm very grateful for. Um, but honestly, I think anyone that is a diabetic should have this. Mm -hmm. um, it it gives you more control over your treatment plan, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that so you, you don't monitor. have to take shots. Um, I do in the evening. Okay. When I go to bed. Okay. Um, but that's it. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of the medication is all oral, so mm -hmm. I'm not constantly poking myself. Which and at one point in time, did you have? like a, a day, a night, sometime that you bottomed out with your sugar? Oh, yeah. And when you bottom out, I, I'm asking this for a reason. I have a friend who just passed away recently, but um, I had her house listed and she bottomed out and somebody who was showing her house found her laying in a coma in her kitchen floor. Yeah. So when this happens to you, do you know immediately? Well, that's one nice thing about this meter is when my blood sugar starts dropping, an alarm goes off. Okay. So I know that I need either. Isn't that weird to you that that little thing and that thing on your arm not even knows what your blood is doing? Yeah. Well, is that not weird? They, they also have an app that would go to my phone. The problem is I use my phone for my business and when the alarm would go off and I'd be talking to a client, mm -hmm. it was very distracting. So mm -hmm. I went back to the meter. Um, but it, it will alert me if it's going high, if it's going low. Um, if it's going low, it gives me an opportunity to um, eat something mm -hmm. that has a little well, sugar in it. Well, we've all seen it. steel magnolias, where right. Julia Roberts right. just goes, you know, and they have to get orange juice and candy and, into her and, immediately. And, yeah. and in case I can't do that, uh -huh. um, I carry a, um, an emergency pen that somebody can inject me with glucose. Mm -hmm. um, to bring up my blood sugar, mm -hmm. so that's always good. And and she'll laugh at this. 
since I'm your buddy and I ought to be carrying candy in the car, I can't carry candy in the car because if I do, I eat it before I see you and I don't have any to give you. No. So, but. I, I usually carry um, one of my favorites to carry in my handbag just because it doesn't melt and whatever else is some um, cinnamon and sugar pecans. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a and good that, idea. And yeah. it's just enough to yeah, level it out. Level it yeah, out. Level mm -hmm. it out. So if you're at home fighting diabetes, and and so many people are, um, Steve was 16 when he was diagnosed, mm -hmm. and he was a very bitter, angry young man the rest of his life. He was not happy because why did he have to have it? Why did none of the other kids have to have it? And then um, I have a niece who has it, but hers has been controlled better because she lives a very rigid lifestyle with that. But um, if you're fighting it and you don't know about these things, to me, every time I watch you do that, I'm in awe because I'm like, I, I hate needles and I wouldn't want to prick myself all oh, the time. The, the first night that I picked up my prescription and I had to give myself an injection, I sat on the edge of my bed and I was in tears. Mm -hmm. I just, I was just beside myself. No mm -hmm. one in my family has ever had diabetes. Um, I had already lost 60 pounds wow. at that point when I was diagnosed, so it's not always um, a weight issue mm -hmm. that causes it. Mm -hmm. um, I think stress over the years probably had something to mm -hmm. do with it, mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's just something that I'm trying to, to manage as best I can. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when I do find something that works for me, I like to share it with mm -hmm. sure. my yeah. friends. Because yeah. as it turns out, I have a few friends that are also diabetic. Well, when the doctor told me to get my A1C in order, and he was going to give me a prescription, and I said, no, you're not. I'll take care of it myself. And so I did it myself by managing stuff. Mm -hmm. And I really watch and manage, and I'm so cautious. And now they're like, wow, it's down below. Wow, wow it's dropping. Oh, it's dropping. Well, yeah, it's because I'm working hard at it. Mm -hmm. But... Um, until you get that wake-up call, sometimes we don't work hard at it. And, and and believe me, nobody loves a Sherry Martin blizzard like I do, but I get like one every other year now. So, But the thing for me was I my blood work had always been normal. And it really? went from being normal to not we're getting close, we need to take a look at this. It went from normal to here you're at. That's crazy. And, isn't yeah, it, it was yeah. very crazy. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, no explanation. It is, it is that time of year that we have to take care of ourselves because we are the ones who are going to be cooking all these great meals for our family in the near future. And don't forget, every week I put a, a small article with a recipe in the progress. And this week it is my crazy shrimp and grits because it's so super simple. It's so super southern and creamy. It is nothing like all those people in Louisiana do. It's not hot. It's not spicy. It's just my creamy shrimp and grits, and it's really, really good. It's probably not good if you're a diabetic because it's mm -hmm. probably got a lot of carbs Grit, in it. Gr grits <laughs> are not on my, my not on the list. Not on my diet. Thanks. No, no, but it is good. It is good. So mm -hmm. yeah. So check out the progress, and um, at the end of the year, we're going to have. Hopefully, we're going to get little. Um, excerpts of all the articles we've done and kind of publish them all in one and 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 let's let's share these recipes because I love hearing from y'all and hearing that you're using my recipes and I have to give this little warning 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 I don't measure anything <laughs> I guess at everything and so when I make bread pudding I have this bowl that holds exactly the bread crumb or the bread cubes I need then I have this bowl that holds exactly the liquid that matches that and I guess one day I need to measure those bowls and tell you what size they are. But the cool thing about a recipe is it is really just a beginning. Just take it's a my suggestion. ideas. Yes, yes. It's a, it's suge a strong suggestion. suggestion. But but I got tickled because somebody was saying, well, how much of the grits? Do, well, it depends on how much you want to make. If you want to make a small pan of grits, but I make a two-quart cast uh, mm -hmm. dish, and and that's and it lasts over the weekend. So that's what I tell people. That's why it's hard when you cook for five kids and a husband. I made 27 biscuits every morning mm. with gravy and meat and all that stuff. And, and so it's hard when you've just cooked by eyesight and by texture and taste and all that to, to tell y'all recipes. So 
if you think it needs adjusting, adjust it. <laughs> but so far, so good. Knock on wood. My grandmother used to cook like that. And my That's granddad, how you cook. That's how cooks my cook. My granddad would say, I really like it this way. Make it like this again. And she couldn't do, she do couldn't this ever so well. Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. she could, by the time it hit the dinner table, she had forgotten what she had put in it. it yeah, was, yeah. It was really funny. That's what good cooks do. And then we just improvise. We make it a little bit better another time. Now, we're going to leave you now with a song that... Um, yeah, it's good to be back home again. It's good to look around at these mountains. It's good to get out and drive around a little bit. And I want to continue to ask y'all to pray for the DeFore family and please pray that um, he gets to come home soon and that all his injuries will be healed and uh, things will be good. Won't it be good to be back home again? Here we go. There's a storm across the valley, clouds are rolling in, the afternoon is heavy on your shoulder, there's a truck out on the four lane, a mile or more away, winding up his wheels just makes it colder. He's an hour away from riding on your prayers up in the sky. Ten days on the road are barely gone. There's a fire softly burning, supper's on the stove. It's the light in your eyes. Sometimes this so far feels like a long lost friend. Yes, and hey, it's good to be back home again. There's all the news to tell him how you spend your time. What's the latest thing the neighbors say? And your mother called last Friday, sunshine made her cry. You felt the baby move just yesterday. Hey, it's good to be back home again. Sometimes it's so far, feels like a long lost friend. Be 
back home again I said hey it's good to be back home 